Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. We are given x plus 1 over x equals 5, and we're supposed to evaluate square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. I'll be presenting two methods, even though we're going to talk about two different things in the first method, and we're going to see that uh, we're kind of getting the same result. Anyways, let me not spoil the surprise, and then uh, we'll do the second. So let's start with the first method. So you can also call it 1a and 1b if you want. So I have x plus 1 over x equals 5, right? And what would you do in, in that kind of situation? Probably make a common denominator or just multiply both sides by x. You get x squared plus 1 equals 5x. And then let's put 5x on the left hand side and get a full quadratic. So this is a quadratic equation and obviously we can solve it using the quadratic formula. One thing to keep in mind is that x must be positive. Why? Because we're trying to evaluate square root of x plus 1 over square root of x and we're looking at real values. If we were looking at complex values, I don't know what that would look like. But we're going to keep it real. So x must be positive. But if you look at this equation, you're going to notice that both of the roots are positive. But let's keep going. So if you solve this equation using the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 25 minus 4, which is going to be 21, and that's going to be divided by 2. So we get two solutions, and if you go with one of them, and let's test both of them, that's what, what I meant by 1a and 1b actually. So let's go ahead and use the positive one first. What happens if x is equal to 5 plus square root of 21 divided by 2? Now remember, in order to be able to evaluate this expression, I do need square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. So let's go ahead and find square root of x first, and then we're just going to take the reciprocal. Make sense? So square root both sides. All right. And that's going to give us the following. And one way to simplify this real quick is multiply the top and the bottom by 2 inside the radical. That's going to give us 10 plus 2 root 21 over 4. Obviously, the square root of 4 is 2, so that simplifies. But what about the square root of 10 plus 2 times square root of 21? That is actually a special expression because if you think about it, and there's a shortcut for this, but let me explain real quick. Uh, find two numbers whose product is 21, and those numbers are 7 and 3, and whose sum is 10. So 7 and 3 satisfy this, and this gives us square root of 7 plus square root of 3. Why? Let me explain why real quick. If you square root 7 plus root 3, you get root 7 squared, which is 7, root 3 squared, which is 3, plus 2ab, which is going to give you root 7 times root 3 times 2. This explains the sum, and this explains the product. Make sense? Hopefully. And that divided by 2. So, what is this? This is square root of x. Okay, great. So now I need to uh, revert it invert it, whatever, reciprocate it. Okay, let's go ahead and find the reciprocal. Let's erase this part. Hopefully you got it. Now, if square root of x is that, then 1 over square root of x is obviously going to be 2 over root 7 plus root 3, but I got to rationalize the denominators here, so multiply by root, uh, multiply by root 7 minus root 3 over root 7 minus root 3. And these are conjugates, so when you multiply, you're going to get difference of two squares, which is a squared plus a squared minus b squared, which is 7 minus 3, which is 4. 2 goes into 4 two times, and we get root 7 minus root 3 over 2. So that, there's something interesting about these numbers, is that root x and its reciprocal are actually conjugates, which is good, because when we add them, something is going to cancel out. So now, root x plus 1 over root x, since square root of x is root 7 plus root 3 over 2, and its reciprocal is just its conjugate. And then root 3 is going to cancel out. 2 root 7 divided by 2 is going to give us root 7. And that is valid because x was positive. This looks good, so on and so forth. Or is it valid? Let's find out. Now we're going to go ahead and use the other root because there were two solutions, remember, to this equation. Right? The quadratic gave us two solutions. So we're going to go ahead and check the other one now. So if we go with, let's see. If we use x equals 
the other one which was 5 minus root 21 over 2 remember I'm supposed to evaluate root x and then find the reciprocal uh, if you square root again to keep a long story short this is gonna be 10 minus 2 root 21 over 4 and that is going to be from here root 7 minus root 3 over 2 and obviously 1 over square root of x is going to be its reciprocal just like before it's going to be root 7 plus root 3 over 2 so by the way notice that these are just switching roles when we use the different roots but they're always reciprocals in other words if you multiply these two numbers the product is 1 and that kind of makes sense doesn't it because root x times 1 over root x is always 1 <laughs> okay great anyways so but that's not what we need. We do need to find root x plus 1 over root x. So let's go ahead and find it based on these values. Guess what? You're going to get the exact same thing because they just switch around. But you get the same thing. Root 7 minus root 3 over 2 plus root 7 plus root 3 order over 2. The order changes, but that doesn't change anything. And you still get root 7 for square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. Great, this doesn't bring us to the end of this video because we're going to talk about the second method next. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. And hopefully you can compare the, uh, the two methods. And it's kind of like 1a and 1b since we use different roots. Uh, but anyways, first method is uh, kind of painful and longer, obviously. That's why it's first method. So now we have square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. We don't know what it is, but we do know x plus 1 over x is equal to 5. Since we don't know what this is, let's go ahead and set it equal to something. How about t, right? Some people like coffee, I like t. Anyways, t is just a variable. So now let's go ahead and square both sides. Now squaring both sides obviously makes sense in this case because we do know x plus 1 over x, which is going to come up. If you square a plus b, you get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. I like to put those two together. So we get x plus 1 over x plus 2ab is just going to be 2 because 2 times root x times 1 over root x is 2. Okay? Equals t squared. But what is x plus 1 over x? Hmm, let's think about it. Come on, you don't need to think about it. It's over there. That's why it's important to keep notes. I think when you're solving a problem, and I know some people um, in the past... Um, express their uh, concern about the problem not being visible all the time but it's hard to put the problem on every single page it's kind of time consuming and i don't think it's very practical but um i i try to write the problem um every time we need it so hopefully that helps anyways uh, x plus 1 over x is given as 5 so this is going to be 5 plus 2 equals t squared which means t squared equals 7. So we kind of split up into two solutions here. t can be root 7. Don't forget there are two numbers, two real numbers, whose square equals 7. And those are root 7 and negative root 7. But t represents, uh, what? t represents square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. Therefore, it needs to be positive. Because these are positive quantities. The sum is positive. We're not going to take negative square root of 7. So we're going to go with square root of 7. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.